Hi friends, I am doing a challenge for Paper Possibilities Crazy Crafters and I am going to create a altered card today. I cut out this image from a book that I have, actually from a little golden book that I have, and I'm going to adhere it to this giant card. Now, I like to rough up shiny surfaces so that it adheres really well and it won't come undone. So we're going to take a second and we are going to rough up the orange part. And now I'm going to go tap that off in the trash can. So the first thing I'm going to do with this card, first of all, just so that you know, I picked the queen and I am going to embellish this side of it. And this is the... I don't know if she's a queen, but she's like the nasty stepmother in Cinderella. So, you know, she's kind of a queen, if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere her onto this card. All right, so we've got our first layer done. Now, I think what I'd like to do is go around it with um, maybe some additional paper, but definitely fabric. So let me go gather up some stuff and I'll be right back. I'm sorry about my weird angle and shadiness. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm just continuing to work on getting all of my crafty stuff into my family room. This is one of the big desks in my family room. And, but I, I have a table I'm trying to get cleared off so that I can make the full transition basically over here. And, you know, it's just time consuming because I, I want to craft and do that. And I, I really love my crafty time. So I'm not doing organizing as much as I should in order to complete this room. But it is on the 2020 to-do list, and so I know that I will get it done. And I think once I finish getting Christmas put away, I'll end up really hunkering down and getting this room done. But you know, I'm having I'm having fun creating and all of that, and so I'm just not going to beat myself up about it. So this is some of my coffee gold dyed paper. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I had some scraps left over from Christmas projects that I did, so I thought I would go ahead and frame around this image with this, and then we'll do our fabric after that. So I'm going to tear all of the edges just so it kind of has that old look to it. This piece is a little bit wider, so I think I can use one to go across and, you know, make ends meet. So let's give that a try. There's going to be a little piece of the card showing through here, which is completely unacceptable. So I think I'm going to add a little piece there and then put the big one over top of it. And we happen to have a nice little scrap right here that we can use. All right, that's going to fit perfectly fine. In case you're new to my channel, I want to let you know that the reason I use my scissors um, after I glue something is because it helps to spread the glue around. It keeps the paper flat and it removes air bubbles and it, it just helps it just look, you know, nice, flat, uniform, all that good stuff. All right, so far so good. So now we just need to do this edge and then there's a little area up here that needs to be done. I'm gonna give a minute for all of this to dry and then I'll use my scissors to cut it off. Sorry guys, I started cutting around the card without, you know, taping it. I have just this tiniest corner <laughs> to cut off, but you know, you guys know how to cut, so that's no big deal. Um, so there we go. We've got this side of the card, which I think I'll keep this way, although I'm not totally decided on that. And then we've got the back. Now, let's start with our embellishing and layering. My sweet friend, Paper Kitty 99 sent me some bundles of lace in a Happy Mail swap. It was like a goodie bag swap. It was so fun. And she sent me these bundles of lace, which I want to hoard them, of course, but in the spirit of using things that our friends send us, I'm going to open this up, uh, the bow, and I'm going to see if there's enough here to make its way around the card. 
Right, we could do two edges, but then we still have the top and bottom. So let me see what else I have. And I'll save that for another project. You know, I got to thinking about it, and since she's a mean lady, I thought it would be good to use black lace. So that is what we're gonna do. So I'm just measuring it out first. If you have a sewing machine, you could sew it. And actually, I probably should have sewed it. I do have a sewing machine, but I'm committed now to gluing it, so that is what we are going to stick to. In case any of you don't know, when you're using Fabri-Tac, after you've had your bottle for a while, and it's a pretty long while, it might start to thicken up. Don't panic, don't throw it away, because um, you know, it does cost a little bit. Just simply, Add some nail polish remover to it. You need the, the acetone kind. Um, and that, you just pour it in there and it loosens it right up. I've done it once already with this bottle. And I did it a few months ago actually. I mean, I got it, yeah, it's been a few months for sure. And it's still nice and liquidy for me. So, um, yeah, just so that you know, you can do that if you need to. The one thing I like about not sewing this lace on is that you can see the pattern of the lace really well and it's actually really pretty. And if I had sewn on it, it would have interrupted the pattern of the lace a little bit. Another thing to keep your Fabri-Tac from drying out too soon is cover it when you're not using it. Like you saw, I just covered that even before I laid this this down because it will help your Fabri-Tac not get gooped up too soon. Before I continue on with embellishing, I'm gonna put a hole in it with my hole punch and I'm gonna thread this through because it's a tag, so you wanna be able to, a tag this big, you don't have to do that, but I, I kinda want this to be a little bit um, over the top, so I'm gonna add this to it first, and then I'll have a real visual of how it's looking and, and how much embellishing do I wanna do. So the question is, do I wanna put the hole for the tag in the center, or do I wanna move it over to the side a little bit? I feel like I wanna go in the center here, so that's what we're gonna do. And then we're just gonna thread this through, and then we'll trim it to size. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, on this side I put the hole right through the queen's forehead, but whatever. <laughs> I can't be perfect. All right, we are gonna go ahead and tie that and then trim it, like I said. We have to remember that this is most likely gonna go in some sort of a pocket, so I can't bulk it up too much down here. I have some little scraps here of fabric. Oh, that looks kind of cool. You know, maybe just glue this on the corner wonder how it would be if I glued it on both corners. I think I could do that. And then at the top, we can go with a little bit more embellishing, but at least if I did this, it would remain somewhat flat. So let's do that. And hopefully it will still slide in and out of its pocket somewhat freely and not get caught on anything. Let's do the same for the other side. Okay friends, I can't help but feel we need something here in this beautiful <laughs> coffee gold paper, but we need something here. So my wonderful friend Carol with Carol's Recrafted Boutique sent me some stamps because she knows how much I love chandeliers and she had this set and it's got this chandelier on it so I it also had this on it so I thought well that's the perfect size for us to go ahead and use as a stamp so oh actually I forgot to bring my clear block over but I wonder if I could do it without it <laughs> I probably shouldn't try I don't know, I think I might try. Let's see what happens. I'm just gonna lay it on here and give it a little tap. <laughs> I, don't <feel> like, <laughs> I don't feel like stamping is natural to me, but um, whatever, you know, we're just gonna, you know, I got the color on there, I can see it. So let's, let's go. We're doing this without the clear block. Don't judge me. 
You know, I'm not in my normal crafty area. So I can see why the clear block is important because like the stamp wiggles around without it. So let me see if I can. Oh look, I did it guys. <laughs> now I'm gonna go clean the stamp off real quick. <laughs> okay guys, I, you know, I'm thinking now what do we write in here? So I was thinking we could write in the name Karen. <laughs> But then, you know, like in a couple years from now, maybe nobody would even know what the heck I was talking about. So I think we're gonna write Queen. And we know that she's the stepmother, but it just sounds better to write Queen there because, um, <laughs> I mean, look at her. So I don't know what else to write, so that's what I'm writing. And you know, it could always be covered up later if, if that's what somebody wanted. So there we go, we've got Queen. <laughs> And it just takes up a little space, so I think that's good. I still haven't decided about embellishing these corners. Part of me feels like I should add some, but then I feel like it's kind of uneven if I don't add it to the bottom. Um, so I think right now what I'm gonna do is leave it. And then once I'm done with the project that this is gonna go with, you know, I might end up with like a scrap that I know is gonna look so good on it and I could use it then. Here is my altered playing card for the Facebook group, Paper Possibilities Crazy Crafters. I hope you like it and I hope that you enjoyed creating it with me. And also, <laughs> before I go, I made this one a long time ago and I just haven't showed it to you guys in a while. So I made this one like at least six months ago and it's just been kind of hanging around. So I thought I would share that. Thanks for watching. See you soon.